I am Dr. Renu Bharadwaj, I am Professor and Head of Microbiology at the BJ Government Medical College, Pune. We are doing diagnosis for dengue and chikungunya for the whole of Pune district. Over the, uh, there has been a marked rise in the number of positive cases in both dengue and chikungunya as compared to the last year. There is almost a threefold rise as compared to the number of cases we had last year. Basically for the diagnosis of dengue we are using the NS1 antigen, we are using ELISA test. For IgM and IgG, and I think all three must be done before you commit, comment on a diagnosis. Because NS1 would be positive in the early phase of the disease, IgM would be positive, say, about the fifth to the seventh day, and IgG would give you an indication whether this is a primary dengue or it is a secondary dengue and more likely to land up with complications. Now, the dengue virus is one of the arboviruses which comes into the flavy group of viruses, it is an enveloped virus. And the structural protein NS1 is what we are detecting in the antigen test. The best method of diagnosis of course would be the PCR, but the PCR is an expensive test and may not be easily available to all the patients and it would not be cost effective also. Just now the government has put a upper limit for test of charges for the uh, test for dengue because the, the, even the dengue serology is expensive, but at least an upper limit has been put on the costing of the dengue serology. But the PCR test varies in the costing of 2000 to 4000 in different places. So, it is often not possible for the patient to get his te testing done by PCR. But if we use a combination of NS1, IgM ELISA and IgG ELISA, it would give a fairly good diagnosis, an accurate diagnosis for dengue. As far as chikungunya is concerned, chikungunya has been a new, pic uh, new entrant uh, in the scene in this year. Though it was there last year, but the incidence has gone up markedly this year. It is also an arbovirus, virus. it belongs to the toga virus family. It is also an envelope virus. Unfortunately, there is no antigen detection test for chikungunya, so you cannot detect it before the 5th to 7th day of illness. So with the result, many people are labeling it as a mystery illness because the test comes negative. Most people are doing a rapid test for chikungunya IgM, which may be negative in the first 7 days. It is not so accurate also, the more accurate test would be the ELISA IgM which should ideally be done after the 8th day of illness, but that would confirm that the illness was chikungunya. Often because the patient comes with fever and lot of joint pains, the clinician is forced to send a test for chikungunya IgM in the early phase of the illness. This comes negative and the patient feels he has a mystery illness. In dengue, it is important to monitor for the platelet count, though platelet counts do decrease in chikungunya, but they do not come down to critical levels. Mortality with chicken uh, dengue is much higher, but with chicken gunya the mortality is not so high, but the morbidity is very high and the patient comes up with joint pains much later in, the, in which carry on for many months and often incapacitate the patient. The joint pains in chicken gunya is because of the antigen persisting in the joints and the muscles. It is not an autoimmune reaction and it may vary from individual to individual. So there is no standard that the joint pains will go in one month or it will go in two months. It may vary in different individuals depending on how long the, uh, the antigen persists in the body fluid tissues. There it is the basically the joint pains are caused by an inflammatory reaction. The IL-6 which goes up in the, in, the, in the area, it is what is responsible for all this effects that you see of the chikungunya virus. But important thing is both of them are spread by the Aedes aegypti mos mosquito. So if we just control the mosquito probably we would be able to decrease the incidence of both dengue and chikungunya. Uh, be very careful about the rapid test which you are using, the, most of the, many of the rapid tests are not evaluated. It has to be an FDA approved rapid test which you want to use if you want to use only a rapid test for diagnosis. Ideal method would be to do an ELISA and if you can afford it, a PCR gives you a diagnosis early in the stage. If you can't afford the PCR, at least try and do an ELISA. If one is uh, com committed to doing a sonar rapid test, then it must be an FDA approved kit before you use it. Thank you to Docplexus for giving me this opportunity to speak to you and I hope whatever we have said will be useful to you in your day to day practice. Thank you.